Good evening, everyone. My name is Chui Wang, one of the founders here at Kokoto Tutoring. And I wanted to take a little bit of time today to walk through how we should have tackled the most recent writing question for the 2022 Selective Schools exam, which occurred just last week. Firstly, we're gonna step through and look at each of the elements of the question. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about some of my suggestions, what a marker is looking for, what I would be looking for when handing out good marks and basically how students should have answered the question to the best of their abilities. So firstly, let's have a look at the three elements of the question. They were pretty simple, but each of them presented a unique challenge. The first one was that it had to be a diary entry format. The second one was that it had to be set in the year 2099, so very far into the future. And the third one was a story starter. The diary entry must start with the words, Dear Diary, when our house robot woke me up with its loud singing, I remembered that, dot, dot, dot. Now, I do understand the stimulus also provided you some suggestions of some topics that the diary entry could cover. So, for example, things like socializing, traveling to and from home, transport, etc. We'll talk a little bit about those at the end of my presentation when I get into some potential story ideas. So the first question really to ask is, well, what format should the writing have been in? Now, hopefully this comes as no surprise to anyone, but it really is asking you to write a piece of creative writing that's in the form of a diary entry. Unfortunately, this can't possibly be a nonfiction piece or a persuasive piece because it's asking you to imagine what the future might be like in 2099. It's not asking you to write a persuasive essay predicting the future or what the future would be like in, in 2099 and providing arguments, it's simply asking you to imagine and then write a piece of creative writing. Now, since it is a piece of creative writing that the question is asking us for, there are a few things that we need to ensure that we include in our narrative. Now, just like every other piece of creative writing, we need to make sure that we have a compelling complication and resolution. Just because it's a diary entry and just because it's set in the future doesn't mean that we shouldn't have some sort of interesting or engaging problem for our main character to solve. The second thing is, since it is a piece of creative writing, we need to pay a lot of attention to our character's personality. Whenever you're writing a regular narrative based on a picture stimulus, you always try to give your character a personality that makes them stand out and makes them relatable and fun to read about. Well, in this case, you are that character. You're the person writing the diary entry, and you need to make sure that your personality shines through. Third of all, we're talking about a polished and developed vocabulary. Now, once again, just because it's a diary entry doesn't mean you can get super informal, use a lot of slang, or use really simplistic language. When you're writing a diary entry, you're writing to yourself. Just because you're writing to yourself doesn't mean you can fall into bad habits and write lazily. So markers are still expecting to you to, uh, to see you have a controlled use of language, of having quite developed vocabulary, and a fairly formal tone, just not super informal. Anything that's not super informal will probably be fine. So let's have a look at the three entries, uh, elements rather, starting with the first element about diary entries. Now, a diary entry is a fairly straightforward format for writing a creative writing piece because a diary entry, if you think about it, is just someone retelling or recalling some events that might have happened to them a while ago or very recently or even on the same day. But really, it's just a recount. And most stories do happen in a fairly chronological manner that you would write in an exam. So realistically, a diary entry is just a first person recounting of something that's happened. So really, it should progress like any other form of narrative. And it doesn't require any structural changes apart from having maybe dear diary at the start, perhaps a date as well. However, because this diary entry, there are a few things that make it slightly different that you may want to think about and that the marker is probably looking for. The first thing is that the story should be temporarily concise. Now, what I mean by that is typically when someone is writing a diary entry, they're not describing months of time in one entry. Most people, for example, they might write a diary entry every night 
before bed or every morning to reflect on the previous day. But usually people make diary entries daily, which means that the marker is probably expecting to see your story happen in a very short span of time. Maybe it was a problem that your character encountered uh, and they took a few hours to resolve it, or perhaps it was something that happened across the day. The marker is certainly not expecting to read a month long recount of a great span of events, although that would still be possible but they're probably expecting a rather short and concise series of events that is more detailed because once again, most people diary daily and therefore you're expecting a lot of detail for every single day. The second thing is because it's a diary entry, that's a very personal form of writing. It's a first person form of writing that realistically you're expecting no one else to read. So therefore the marker is expecting to see you recognize that and put a little bit of as I've written here, personal insight into the character. Remember, someone who's writing a diary is thinking no one else is going to read this. This is just for me, which means that they're probably going to be sharing a lot of their deep thoughts. They're going to be sharing a lot of their internal dialogue because really the writing is meant just for them. So if we get a good personal inside view of your character uh, for your diary entry, that would mean it's very successful. The final thing is usually at the end of a diary entry, there is some kind of reflection on that day's events, right? A character usually doesn't just, or anyone usually doesn't just write a diary entry that's just events, 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 and then they move on. Well, in this case, I'm probably the marker is expecting to see in your resolution a few sentences where your protagonist, your narrator, you yourself, you reflect on what's happened in that day and maybe what you learned from it. How did your character develop coming out of that experience? Really, it's much like any other type of resolution, but you might wanna make it a bit more explicit this time. Now, element number two is that it's set in 29.99. This is the critical and distinguishing element of the stimulus. So what I mean by that is it's really the key. Uh, it's really the, the thing that drives your story into the final shape. Because just because it's a diary entry uh, doesn't mean that it's going to really be the main idea of your story. But really, the fact that it's set so far into the future, that needs to be the main idea. That's the critical, new, unique part of that particular stimulus. Now, just because uh, the, it's asking you to write a story set in 2099, set so far in the future... It's actually not asking you to write a science fiction story or a science fiction story in the sense of an unrealistic, exaggerated or extreme science fiction story. So the marker is not expecting and will probably not mark very highly stories about futuristic space wars or robots taking over the world or dystopias or anything like that that you might have read, say, in The Hunger Games or other novels like Dune. The marker is not expecting those. And the reason why they're not expecting those is because they're asking you to write a diary entry imagining you were living in the year 2999. They're asking you to imagine what everyday life would be like for kids your age in that year. And what e what's an even better suggester is that they've given you some suggestions of topics like transport, socialization, and traveling from home. Do you really think they would give you the suggestion of transport and socialization if all you wrote about was a, whoops, a futuristic space war or robots dominating the earth? That would be quite inappropriate. What I'm trying to say is, despite it's set in very far in the future, it should still have been a realistic and relatable narrative, right? It has to be something that a marker could sit there and read and think, hey, that might actually happen in the everyday world in 2999. The marker is not going to be super happy with a massive story with explosions and death and laser guns and things like that. So really, you're thinking, what are the realistic challenges that a child of your age would face in that year? What is everyday like for them in that year? What sorts of problems might come up uh, in the future in 2999 that we might not deal with now? Finally, the third element is this story starter. Now, I think this story starter is quite open-ended because even though it provides you with a couple of things that you definitely need to think about, they're not so specific that they shape exactly what your narrative is. So let's have a look at what those two things are. The first thing in the story starter is, well, your character is, has seemingly forgotten something. 
Remember, the story starter goes along the lines of, I was woken up by the house robot singing and I remembered that dot, dot, dot. Now, that is a heavy implication that your character has suddenly remembered something when they woke up that they had previously forgotten. Now, really, the marker is expecting you to see, expecting to see you pick up on this sort of detail. And this forgetting and remembrance should play a critical part in your story because it's such an important part of the stimulus. Your character can't just forget something and then remember it at the start of the story, and then that becomes irrelevant. Oh, I remembered that I forgot to brush my teeth. And then the rest of the story is not about brushing your teeth at all. Right? That would not be a good way of dealing with that particular point of the stimulus. It really needs to play a more central idea. So you ask yourself the question, what important thing did your main character forget and how will they fix that? How did forgetting this particular thing impact them? Uh, and how will they overcome that forgetting up until that point in this diary entry? The other element of the story starter that we know is that robots are a part of this future world. And not only are robots part of the future world, they've integrated themselves into our everyday lives to the point where you have house-made robots that are singing, uh, that wake us up, that act like alarm clocks, and I guess would do a number of other things, perhaps like cook or clean or something like that. So they play a very intimate role in our future lives. So because there are robots in the story starter, you can't just have you can't just completely ignore about them for the rest of the story, right? Robots need to play some large part in the story somehow, or there needs to be at least some reference to robots continually. It would be really bizarre in your diary entry, for example, if you talked about the seeing robot, and then for the rest of the diary entry, they were just not present at all, and there was no reference to robots at all. So really, you need to think about how you might integrate that robot part into your story as well especially the fact that they've become such a large part of our daily, everyday, intimate lives. Now, the final slide is about some potential story ideas. What, how do we apply the things that I've just talked about and convert them into coherent, uh, standard, and good narratives for the selective score? Now, my one tip for this particular question, I've written there in my first stop point. You don't want your narrative to simply deal with contemporary issues with a coat of futuristic paint. Now, what does that mean? Contemporary issues in 2022 for kids of your age might be like, oh, I really want to win a running race. I really want to do well in an exam. Oh, no, I've forgotten something at home. I've forgotten I'm late to my exam. I'm late to this. I'm late to that. I want to win a science fair. You know, I'm a competitor. I want to win at basketball. Right? These are just regular issues for kids these days. Now, you don't want to just write that kind of story, but set it in 2999. That doesn't really show that you've engaged with the futuristic part of the story. So, for example, if you are just writing about a, a child who was in the middle of an exam and they're really stuck, except it's just said in the future, that would be quite a cliched and, and not a particularly responsive way of dealing with the stimulus. So what I'm suggesting when, when it came to some ideas or maybe the best stories is that they really ask themselves, what are the problems that kids will face in 2999? Now, I've given a couple of story ideas here, and uh, I, might, I might talk a little bit about you know, how you might set up these stories and how they might play out. Now, one thing, for example, that I think would have been really interesting to talk about is the effects of climate change. Now, we know that year upon year, climate change is getting worse, uh, especially pollution is getting worse as well, air pollution all around the world because of, you know, industry and things like that. And it's obviously going to be more of a significant challenge for kids in 2999. Remember, that's almost 100 years from now. Now, since one of the suggestions in the particular stimulus talked about transport and traveling from home, perhaps your diary entry could be about how transport and traveling from home interacts with climate change. For example, we know now that a lot of electric cars are being made, right? There are lots of cars that are being made that don't burn fossil fuels anymore. Well, how will kids in the future, in 2099, protect themselves from air pollution when they're going out about maybe when they're traveling to school and how might something like electric vehicles or other climate helping climate protecting technologies help kids you know travel about and engage with their world without necessarily polluting the environment 
Now, maybe we could go the other way. Maybe we could think about a $29.99, which is quite heavily polluted. Well, how will kids protect themselves from that pollution? Maybe, for example, your story could be about a kid who is about to go to school, but they've forgotten to maybe replace their gas filter on their mask. Okay, perhaps there's a gas filter in, in the electric cars or something like that to protect them from air pollution. Now, how will they continue and how will they solve that problem? And perhaps at the end of the day, once they figure that problem out and they're able to get to school safely without the problem of this pollution, they might reflect to themselves about how, how terrible it was that we never protected the environment and how much work there is still to be done in this future world of protecting the environment, even though it's already fallen to this kind of state. Now, there are many, many ideas there. That's just one example. Another idea I had was, well, about focusing in specifically on this artificial intelligence and robots. Now, we do know that artificial intelligence and robots in this world, they've already taken up and become a major part, right? You have the singing maid robot at home who's waking you up. Well, how do, would artificial intelligence and robots work in a social context? I think that would be quite an interesting story. Now, we know that robots have probably taken over quite a few jobs. Maybe, for example, robots have even taken over the jobs of teachers at schools, now, how does that change a child's relationship with the teacher? Okay, or perhaps, for example, children might have robot companions. Maybe there are lots of autonomous AI walking around. Now, perhaps your story could be about, for example, a child who gets into an argument or gets into a dispute with a robot. And that might get you to think about what are some differences between how computers communicate to us and how human beings communicate with each other. Maybe it's about an idea about emotion or something like that. And maybe the child could reflect at the end about the differences between robots and human beings and how far they still have to come before they can ever really socialize on an equal level. Now, I know these sound like quite complex ideas, but we can really boil down many of these problems into much simpler stories. And I just wanted to give you two examples of them. For example, a simpler story might just be, well, the fact that there's flying cars. That's very realistic for $29.99, maybe. But you might say to yourself, well, if, if there are flying cars, how might traffic work? And how might a kid who is trying to get to school deal with all the air traffic of flying around? Or perhaps what role do regular cars, ground cars play in relation to flying cars when a kid is trying to get to school? What's the traffic situation like? I hope you all sort of try, are seeing what I'm trying to express here. You really have to think about what are the everyday problems faced by a kid in 29.99 and how are they going to deal with that? Those are the things that you need to put in a diary entry. I hope today's uh, short speech and short report has been helpful to you. And hopefully uh, you managed to do some of these things in the recent selective schools exam. Feel free to reach out at any time on WeChat and we'll be happy to answer more questions. Thank you very much, everyone.